In this video, we are going to start from scratch with Formstack documents making a Word document. So if you have never made a Formstack document before, or you have and you're just a little confused and you want someone to explain it really simply, this is the video for you. Hi, I'm Kyle, the creator of No Code Collab, a site with tips, tricks, and tutorials for your next no code project. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and head over to our website where we have code snippets and other resources to help you during your no code builds. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're actually gonna start outside of Formstack documents. There are document builders inside of the Formstack documents app, I've just found them to be a little buggy. So I have better results when I just work outside of the app to create my templates. It doesn't matter if you are in the Google suite, the Microsoft suite, the Apple suite, all you need to do when you create your document is save it off as a docx, as a Microsoft word document. As long as you get to that file format, you will be able to upload it into form stack documents. In addition to showing you how to add tags that can be swapped out for live data, I'm also going to show you how to use conditional if else statements that will help you start to drive really powerful documents. And you'll be able to add sections of text and you can hide and show different things. So you can really drive some powerful document automations. If you're wanting to take this to the next level, there are a lot more things that you can do from a logic standpoint. You can start to show and hide table rows, page breaks, images, all that kind of stuff. So this is just scratching the surface with, with what's possible, but it really does get you off on the right foot for making some really powerful documents. So let's dive in. Okay, so here I am. I'm starting inside of Google Docs. This is where we're going to start from scratch. We're going to save it as Microsoft Word document, and then we'll bring that into Formstack documents. For the sake of this example, let's say I'm trying to make a document about dog breeds. Okay, so I've got a breed name. I've got the AKC group, the American Kennel Club group, and I've got the coat color just for the sake of this example, you could have a lot more information. Now, in this case, I want the breed name to be much larger because it's the kind of the title of the document. And let's make it 24. My AKC group is going to be 14 and italicized. And then my coat colors are, uh, let's make them 14 as well. And bold. Okay. So this is my very simple template. Now, in order to make this a document that Formstack Documents is going to understand, I need to create little tags that the Formstack Documents software, once we load it in, they're gonna look through our document and they're gonna identify these little tags. And so I just need to add the tags to the page so that when they are scanning it, they're gonna identify the different tags. So breed name is going to be one of them. The way that you create a tag is you have, let me zoom in here. You have a left curly bracket, a dollar sign, and then whatever you want, you give it a tag name. In this case, the tag name is going to be breed name. All one word, no spaces. And then to close the tag, you put a closing curly bracket on it. So I've got breed name. Then I've also got AKC group. So left curly bracket, dollar sign, and I'm gonna call this AKC group. You can call these things whatever you want. Call them something that is short, that you will recognize and you will know exactly what is supposed to go where. Otherwise, if you're giving it some abstract name that you can't really tell, or they're all like tag one, tag two, tag three, that's not helpful because you're eventually gonna need to map your data to these 
tags. And if you can't tell the tags apart, that's a problem. So I'm gonna go coat color. I like to do this thing called camel casing. Camel casing is where when you remove the spaces from the words, you capitalize the first letter of each word. It just makes it a little easier to read. So if, if this looked like that breed name, it's just a little harder to read than breed name. So now I've got my tags. What's going to happen is when form stack documents scans this document, they're gonna find these tags and they're gonna swap out the tag for whatever data we that has been mapped or is being sent to that document. So in this case, what's gonna happen is it's gonna say breed name Labrador. So maybe what I wanna do is I wanna go like that. Breed name Labrador, AKC group, and then it's gonna swap it. sporting. Coat color, yellow, black, brown, right? This is gonna swap these out. If you wanted to, you could take this out. Really anything outside of the curly brackets is going to remain untouched. That will, that will be added to the document. Anything inside the curly bracket is going to be swapped out. The other important thing to note is however you format your curly brackets and, and your tags, that is how the, the form stack document engine, that is how it will render or style the content once it's been swapped out. So when we add the breed name, it's gonna be big and it's gonna be size 24. And let's, if we were to make it green, it will be green. If we add an underline to this, once it's swapped in, it'll be green and underlined. This will be, I, the AKC group will be italicized. So know that however you style the tag is how the content is going to look once it is rendered on your page. So that is an important bit to know. So you can come through here and you can design this up. You can get everything looking just right. And wherever you need things to be swapped out, you just put the curly bracket dollar sign, create a tag name, and that's how you're gonna insert information. One thing to note as you're doing this, sometimes these documents can get, uh, can get full of a lot of information and just know, be thinking about your data that's going to be flowing in. Is this going to be a long paragraph or is this gonna be two words max? Is this gonna be a bunch of numbers? And so you would actually wanna put a dollar sign on the outside because it's a currency. Be thinking about what data is coming in because then that is how that will help you design out this document. Because if this was a long paragraph of text that was gonna be fed in, you're gonna end up, you're gonna end up with something that is, that's really long, right? It's gonna take up all the page. So you might not wanna style it that way. So just understand that with these Word documents, the, the layout is going to flex and lines are gonna break as content is added. So if it's longer or shorter. So let's just stop there and let's bring this into form stack documents. So I'm in, like I said, I'm in Google. We're gonna go to file, download as Microsoft Word. And now you can see I've got my test document that has been downloaded. If I head over to form stack documents, I'm gonna create a new document and let's call this dog breeds dog breed, dog breed doc. Now, as I said earlier, you can start from scratch inside of form stack documents. I don't ever do that. You can start with a template from scratch. I don't like to do that. So I always start outside. So I'm gonna bring in a document that I use and I'm gonna choose that file, called it test document three. That was the document that I just created. I'm gonna go next. And let's just say I wanna send that document to my email address. If you wanted to save this to Google Drive or Box or you wanted to send it to a signature platform, you wanted to do something else with it, then you would click third-party delivery. 
or you could click both. Then if you have a form stack form, if you had a type form, if you had a jot form, if you had some other service, maybe you had a webhook, something, if you had data coming from somewhere else, you would click this integrate with external service. For the simplicity's sake, we're just gonna use a data collection form that's just kind of natively built into form stack documents. So I'm gonna choose this last one, and then I'm gonna hit finish. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna quick show you the tabs and go over the tabs that are at the top so that you're a little bit more familiar with the interface and what's going on. So we've got our dog breed doc. If I click on overview, and actually let me, let me go back. If you come in on the home, Sometimes when you log in, it takes you home. So now you go to documents. And now you've got, when you click on documents, you can see all of the documents. And I'm going to click on dog breed doc. And so now I'm in my dog breed doc. Overview, this kind of shows me the merges, things that have been going on. Manage file. This is where I can see the file. If I click edit in Office Online, I can actually see the file that I've uploaded. You could edit your file here. Anything that you do here is going to be reflected in your document. Every once in a while I have trouble with this though. So I kind of avoid doing the online document editing just because I've, I've run into some issues. So that's why I like to do everything outside of Formstack documents. If you had a new version, you could upload that. Then heading over to settings, you can change the name of your document. If you want your output to be another Word document, you can do that. Otherwise, if you don't want people editing it, you could save it as a PDF or a JPEG. You can change the, the time zone, test mode, stuff like that. The key here on the settings page that I wanna point out that I always do for every document. I come into advanced settings and what I do is I click this, tick this box that says use field map for custom integrations. I always tick that box. If I have a more complex document, I will also tick the save data to remerge download later because that will allow you to kind of debug a little bit and, and kind of just, if, especially if you have a long form, you don't have to refill out the form a lot. So it's, I, I just kind of like doing that on more complex documents, but on something simple like this, you can just click use field map. So now I'm going to save my settings, that's important. And you'll notice what happened once I did that, once I ticked that use field map for custom integrations box, I got a new tab up here. That tab is called field map. And now the interesting thing about the field map is when I click on that, I can see my tags that I have added to my document. So I've got breed name, AKC group, and coat color. Those were the three tags. I made up those names myself. I put them in the document, but when I loaded them into Formstack documents, it looked through the documents, found my tags, and now it's showing here. And this UI will update. This will update as I add more tags. And let me show you that quick. So if I come in, I look at the file and I edit it. And let's say I wanna call this um, uh, height, right? And I'm gonna actually add a, let's just, for the sake of it, I've added this new tag, right? Curly bracket, dollar sign, height. It says it's saved a web merge. If I come back out here, when I go to this field map, you're gonna see height has been added. It looked through my document, saw height, it's added it to my field map. So this is really handy because what you can also do is in more advanced videos I can show, the you can format your data here. If it's coming in in a weird way, it's, it's coming in as a number, but you want it to be currency. The date format, it has time, but you don't want it to have time. You can do a lot of stuff in your field map that, are, that keeps your documents clean so that's another reason why the field map is handy. When it comes to the test, we can test our document. That's what we're gonna do next, but we've got all of our, our little tags. We've got our delivery. It's gonna send it to my email, kyle at launchandland.com. And the merge tag is kind of more advanced stuff that we don't, I don't touch all that much. So if we head back over here to the test, and I'm gonna say my breed name is gonna be a Labrador. Labrador AKC group is sporting. Code color is yellow, black, brown, and height. I don't even know how. To, four hands. I don't know. Maybe they 
measured dogs and hands at one point. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm saying, what do these tags equal? What do these tags equal? I'm kind of getting around, you know, this is where if you had a form stack form for an air table, um, if you had a type form, a jot form, you could be sending data to this document and then you'd map it. Here, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of skipping that mapping part because it already knows that it's already kind of mapped it for me. So here we go. I also want to go back. Let's go to our settings and let's do this as a PDF because I don't want people to edit this. So I'm going to save that. So now that's going to save as a PDF. Go to my test. Oh, I got to fill it up again. Labrador Sporting. Yellow, brown, black, and four hands. Okay. So if I test my document, it's now taking that data that I put in there and it's inserting them and swapping it out for those tags. So if I click and I view this, I can see that I've got breed name, Labradors. It's filled in all my stuff. Everywhere there where there was a, a tag, it swapped it in. So great. We built our first document automation. This is fantastic. Now what we want to do is let's introduce a little logic. We're going to take this up a notch and we're going to introduce a little logic to really make things fun. So we've got our breed name. Let's say that if the, the AKC group is toy, then I want to, uh, then I want to show a picture of a, of a Chihuahua. Okay, so what we can do is we can use this this logic, this conditional statement where I say curly bracket because the curly bracket tells form stack documents to pay attention. So I say curly bracket if, and now my tag. So if AKC group. So this is my tag and you'll notice it's the exact same tag as it was up above. So I'm saying if AKC group equals and I use two equal signs to compare something. So if AKC group equals toy, then I'm going to do this stuff. And what I want to do is I'm going to go find a Chihuahua. I'm going to find a picture of a Chihuahua. That one looks cute. Let's copy this picture. Let's bring it over here. I'm going to show a picture of a Chihuahua. And now, so if AKC group equals toy, show a picture of the Chihuahua. And then to finish it off, to close off this tag and, and say to form stack documents, stop paying attention. You can close it off with what's called a, a closing if statement. So now if AKC group equals toy, then we're going to do this stuff inside in between those two, those two declarative statements. If it doesn't equal toy, then we're going to skip over. So basically if, if it equals sporting, it's going to come here and it's going to say, does it equal toy? No, it equals sporting. And so it's going to skip down to the next thing and there's no next thing. It's done. Now, if I wanted to, I could do something like this. I could say, I could say else if, and that's saying, okay, so it wasn't toy, but else if AKC group equals sporting, then do what's ever in here. So now I'm going to go find a picture of a standard poodle. I think a standard poodle is a sporting dog, isn't it? It doesn't look like it, but they, there's, there's our standard poodle. So I'm going to show a picture of a standard poodle. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm introducing some logic. What I'm, now what I'm doing, I'm driving the output of this document based on what someone is filling in, based on the information that has been sent over. So I'm going to save this as a Microsoft Word document. I'm going to come back in here, 
manage my file. I'm gonna upload a new file. It's just four. Now it's uploading, it's looking through. You can see now I've got some images that it found. And if I look at my field map, everything still looks good. If there is an issue with your file, when you upload it, it will, it will throw an error. So you'll know that, hey, something's going on here. So just know that. But now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go, let's test it again. So breed name, Labrador, AKC group is sporting. Let's test this document again. What I'm expecting to see is a picture of a standard poodle after the, after the breed. And there we are. So we basically said it looked through and you can see I've got this, this watermark over my file so that um, they automatically do that when you're in testing mode. Um, but it looked at the, it looked at the group and it said, oh, AKC group, that equaled sporting, include the image. So that is, you can, you can just stack on these else if statements. You can just start using logic to just really build out um, crazy, like complex and powerful documents. Another good example of using this would be um, if the state equals Texas, then include this thing or if it equals minnesota include this thing um if there were if the gender was this then do that if the you know there's all these things that you can do to show and hide different parts of your document it doesn't have to just be an image let's say you wanted to come down here and you wanted to do something that was like you know you could you could do text inside here as well so that you we could do this is a poodle. So you could do text, doesn't just have to be images. So really powerful because you can drive the, the output. So that is a, a pretty, and then also one other thing to point out, if we wanted to shrink this down, however we have this in our, in our document is how it will get rendered like I said, is how it will get rendered by Formstack. So we can shrink these down. Let's say I wanted to, you know, make this bigger, make it red. You know, this will all get rendered by Formstack as you see, as you see here. So what we've done here, we've created a very basic document, but we've also started to show that what we're doing is we're creating these little tags. And these tags are what Formstack documents will look for. And then you'll be able to start feeding in the new, uh, feeding in the data to those tags to have it swapped out. Now, the next step here is to actually connect this with Formstack forms or with some sort of other uh, form tool. We've got a video on that. So be sure to check that out if you're wanting to take your form and have it be populated with data from an outside tool like Formstack Forms. Hopefully you found that tutorial helpful and you have a better idea of what goes into making a document template that will work inside of Formstack documents. It's not that hard, but you do need to know some of the nuances in order to make sure that you don't step on too many rakes. So hopefully you found it helpful. Be sure to check out our other videos on Formstack. We've got a lot of, a lot of great information. If you have any questions or you want any specific answers, please reach out in the comments and I will answer those questions directly. Otherwise, we hope to see you at the next tutorial.